COVID-19 considerations in a non-ICU inpatient setting during emergency response and CPR by Maeve Gian Gregorio on behalf of the 8 East EPQI team. Objectives. Review PPE required during resuscitation events, regardless of patient's COVID-19 status. Discuss COVID-19 precaution zones during emergency events. Demonstrate how to prevent cross-contamination across COVID-19 precaution zones. Demonstrate communication pathways across COVID-19 precaution zones. Discuss new emergency response roles as a result of COVID-19 precautions. Emergency response, including CPR events, in pediatric patients with confirmed or suspected COVID-19 presents unfamiliar challenges to in-hospital staff. Harmonizing the urgent needs of a patient with the safety of staff is a constant and unique concern. Interim guidance to support these challenges has been provided by the American Heart Association. COVID-19 is highly transmittable during resuscitation events. Optimizing patient outcomes and protecting staff from COVID-19 exposure are the utmost importance. Guiding principles to reducing staff exposure. Consistent, proper donning of necessary PPE limiting staff in the room when possible, and establishing clear zone boundaries when not in an airborne room. When called to or responding to a situation where there is potential for the patient's condition to deteriorate and AGPs to take place, staff should enter the room wearing full PPE. The AHA recommends donning full PPE before engaging in CPR or other AGPs to reduce staff exposure to COVID-19. Donning full PPE is done before entering either the hot or warm zones and includes a gown, gloves, N95 or PAPR, and eye protection. Consideration for the location of a patient resuscitation is important. Negative pressure rooms provide clear warm zone boundaries. Standard rooms do not. Establishing clear warm zone boundaries when there is no anteroom is important. Following guidelines for PPE in the warm zone is essential to minimize staff exposure. Teams and zones. Three teams form. The in-room emergency response team, the anti-room team when using a negative pressure airborne precaution room, and the outside team. The responding teams are divided into three zones. The patient's room is considered the hot zone. The anteroom and designated area outside of the patient's room, which is particularly important to establish during events in a non-negative pressure room, are the warm zones, and the remainder of the hallway outside of the patient's room is the cold zone. Whenever possible, staff not in full PPE should prioritize donning all the necessary PPE recommended during a resuscitation as soon as they are able to do so. Staff in full PPE entering a clinical emergency should recognize and encourage those not in full PPE to don the necessary items. Acknowledging and considering the safety of all staff, especially when in a patient care situation that requires more PPE than currently in place, is an important and ongoing consideration. The patient's condition has deteriorated. The response team is activated while CPR is initiated. Staff entering warm zones must don PPE appropriate for aerosol-generating procedures, including gown, gloves, face shield, and N95 respirator, or PAPR, prior to entering these zones. With full PPE in place, staff in the warm zone are prepared to enter the room rapidly if needed. If members of the anteroom team must enter the hot zone, backup team members from the cold zone should replace anteroom staff. It is important to have an anteroom team. Typically, two nurses are positioned in the anteroom or designated warm zone. One nurse monitors safe entry and exit into patient's room by ensuring the integrity of the doors, while the other nurse relays information, medications, and supplies between the inside and outside teams. Prior to staff being positioned in the anteroom, it is important to establish visual contact with staff inside the room and whiteboards for communication as needed. This schematic highlights the key roles in the warm zone. The team inside the room is limited to only those necessary for patient care. That includes the airway manager, 
the nursing event manager, who is most often the charge or resource nurse, the patient's nurse, recorder, and respiratory therapist. Additional nurses will be present as necessary for compressions and defibrillation, vascular access, and medication administration. If an ICU or code team provider arrives for additional support, the provider already in the room should remain. Establishing key roles for the outside team is important. As staff respond to the event, donning PPE should be done away from the code cart and room entrance to prevent disruption of supplies, medications, and communication between teams. An outside team provider dons preliminary PPE in case they are needed in the room and also assists with order entry and relaying communication to the inside room provider. The hallway nursing event manager, usually an experienced nurse such as a charge nurse or resource nurse, organizes the outside team by assigning roles, receiving and sharing communication with the inside team, and providing important information to arriving code response staff. The code cart team positions the code cart in the cold zone outside the patient's room to prepare medications and airway supplies. The PPE enforcer acts as a gatekeeper to supervise and ensure proper PPE donning before staff enter the room. The biocontainment site manager may take this rollover or assist with proper PPE donning once they arrive. A staff member is designated to the communication role. This team member establishes communication between the inside room team and outside hallway team by setting up Zoom connections on multiple devices. This schematic also demonstrates key personnel. Communication has distinct challenges. In addition to usual team huddles and assigning roles, establishing a plan for communication between the inside and outside team is essential. Zoom ID numbers and login information should be posted inside each patient room and outside the patient's door whenever possible. Consideration for both audio, such as smartphones, and visual, such as writing on whiteboards, is recommended. Headsets may be used if available. Only key personnel, such as the providers and nurse event managers, should remain unmuted for communication. All other devices should be muted to reduce feedback. The code cart team positions the code cart in the cold zone outside the patient's room to prepare medications and airway supplies. The code cart team ensures integrity of doors before passing medications and supplies into the anteroom. The emergency airway kit, EAK, with intubation medications is brought to the code cart from the Pixis, if not on the code cart. To conserve medications, weight-based doses are calculated and labels created in anticipation of a rapid sequence intubation. However, the medications are not prepared until they're needed. Necessary equipment such as the defibrillator and ambu bag with HEPA filter are gathered and relayed into the room. In addition to requesting medications and supplies, it is important for the inside team to broadcast key milestones and updates to the outside team. Keeping the entire team informed of the patient's status is essential. Whiteboards can be used to assist communication between teams. Having whiteboards readily available is recommended. As additional code team members arrive, the hallway provider and nursing event manager provide essential information to the arriving code team. The biocontainment team is part of code activations and response. A biocontainment site manager will support a range of duties, including ensuring appropriate donning and doffing, establishing Zoom connections, and overseeing safe transfer to a higher level of care. In-room participants that do not need to be in direct contact with the patient should maintain a distance of six feet from the airway whenever possible to reduce exposure. This patient has successfully been defibrillated with return of circulation. Preparations may begin to transfer the patient to a higher level of care. The inside team communicates to the outside team when the patient needs to be transferred to a higher level of care. Cold zone staff, including the hallway nursing event manager and biocontainment site manager, help to prepare for the patient transfer by clearing the hallway for patient transport. Once ready, the inside team initiates transport of the patient. The inside team confirms with the outside team prior to leaving the room. Only the minimum necessary staff should accompany the patient on transfer. Once the hallway is cleared, staff from the inside room transfer the patient to a higher level of care 
being mindful of keeping away from other people and equipment. When possible, the biocontainment site manager will oversee transport of the patient. The biocontainment site manager is available to supervise doffing of all staff who participated in the event. The staff remaining in the patient's room should enter the anteroom two at a time to doff safely. At the end of doffing, all gowns are placed in the dirty linen cart inside the patient's room. Thank you.